excellent day for an exorcism. Welcome to Just Another Horror Podcast. A man calling every Russian, I think you're coming! I'm John. I worked at Burger King and I got some problems with his bullshit. I'm Cobra. It's funny that you both like really <laughs> shitty movies. Hello, welcome to Just Another Horror Podcast. I'm John. I am Ben. I am Cobra. See, I screwed up. (laughs) I broke my own rule. Uh, We reviewed most of the Halloween series, but we haven't reviewed the 2018 movie yet, so we're going to do that now because it's Halloween today, I hope, if I get this out on time. Forget, I, I believe I've said this twice since we've covered this series. Forget everything that you know about the Halloween series. <laughs> Is this the third or fifth timeline? Oh my god. Um, this is the fifth. I think it's five. Four. Four. It's the fourth. Four? Yes. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. Uh, one, two, four. Oh, I guess if you count three as a timeline on its own. Three is its own. Okay, then five. it's five. It's five. Holy shit. Good yeah, I'm god. tired of people giving Halloween three shit. Yeah. Not that bad. It continues to move up. If you look at people's list, they automatically put it last in the series because it didn't have Michael Myers. No, it, it's got a big. It's starting to pick up popularity big time. It's lately. got a big resurgence. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You people don't look at lists. I know that. So don't you tell me. It's got a cult following now. It's uh, yeah. It may. It's but it is near the end of everybody's list. There's... They are Friday fiving that movie now. Like all of a sudden, Friday Five is like, oh, that's one of my favorites. Yeah, it's sleazy and fun. Said yeah. nobody ever. I just did. <laughs> Put me on record. All right, um, this movie is unnecessary, uh, and I'm gonna jump right out of the gate by saying, what the hell are people trying to make the Halloween series into? What do they want? Like, how many times are we going to see Laurie Strode fucking go against Michael Myers? And how many ways are we going to twist it? What What do they want? If you're going to have Michael Myers, put him somewhere else. Have him do something else. Not fighting Buster Rhymes, but doing something else. I'm tired of this. Trick or treat, motherfucker. Oh, God. That's the problem. When they do do something else, it's fucking terrible. And Laurie okay. Strode... Jamie Lee Curtis gets worse every time she comes back in this series. Yeah. She was better in this than H2O. I don't yes, know. I don't know. She's terrible. So, do you want to know what the problem with this series is? John Carpenter has already said it a hundred times. There's nowhere else to take it after part one. Yeah. After the 78 movie. So you're going to have to really stretch the reasons for why Michael is still around. So we watched part two the other night, and we discussed how he had to come up with something. And what he came up with was, Laurie Strode is Michael Myers' sister. Right away in this movie, they throw that out. Yes. Why would Michael Myers feel the need to come back to Haddonfield and attack Laurie Strode if it's just some random woman... Hold on. He's been doing this for 40 years, Hold on. right? Yeah. God. Hold on. I thought that, too. I kept thinking, because I saw this when it first came out. I didn't go to the theater, but I did see it when it first came out. Um, and so when we were going to watch this, I kept thinking, like, it's fucking stupid. Michael's going to break out of this prison and go attack a, a girl that he didn't kill 40 years before. But... He just went back to Haddonfield to cause havoc. Mm. Doctor, whatever his name is, is oh. the reason he okay. got to uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's compound, Lori's compound. He was not headed there. That's true. That's true. But why would Lori think that he would be going there? Because yeah, she's, she's traumatized. Really she's it's like a, an attack, you know. I mean, she wasn't raped, but like a, a victim of a of a violent crime, 
you're, you're going to have PTSD. You're going to see that person everywhere. If you're traumatized, you do what you did in H2O and move to a different city. Change your name. If you don't stay there. And by the yeah. way, her house, come on. A little bit excessive. If she's been doing that her whole life, right? She's been making this house her whole life. What was the job where she made the money to put this house together? Right? Because she lost her kids because she didn't take care of them. Two divorces. John. John. Two. Cobra, you you know where we live. Poor people have survivalist compounds all over our area. But they're like trailers. They're like trailers with guns. This, is this a... was like 13 ghosts with like gates coming down yep. and like a big yeah, but lavatory. This house was out. huge. Huge. I feel... She got it in the divorce. I don't know. That must be it. I believed it. I, I don't know. There was so much I didn't... There was so much I could not buy. I, I couldn't buy it. Like... You know the biggest problem with this movie? Hmm. Who was producing on it? Oh, Bloom House. I'm a loser, baby, so why don't you kill me? <laughs> <laughs> I do like it. The Bloom House is terrible. I've, I've never seen Sinister. Uh, well, I love I've Sinister. I've never seen The Purge. No, uh, no good. I like the Paranormal Activity. What else did he uh, produce? He makes a lot of newer movies, too, that we me and Robin watch and they fucking stink I just watched um, Upgrade and I liked Upgrade and that was Bloom House that was a good movie so but that's not a horror movie I just know uh, Danny McBride as the writer like because he's found it down is hilarious but it is I mean, this movie should have had some funnier parts the humor the in this part with like the rapey friend that was like oh these girls were dancing on me and I had this chub at the dance but that like... wasn't even funny no like... it's like The cops, the cops were funny. I liked the cops and their banter with the food. So you're trying to tell me that was fine. People give. I'm not crapping on Deborah Hill. People give Deborah Hill credit for the '78 dialogue between the girls. That's how teenagers would talk. I don't buy that, but I wasn't around in '78 as a teenager, so I don't know. I believe that. This is how kids talk today. Maybe, but the act, the, the delivery of the lines was the problem with with that. Well, uh, I mean, that's the acting. Um, but well, that's what I'm watching. But that's that's also a bit of commentary. You have the shitty boyfriend who does something wrong <laughs> and gaslights his girlfriend to say, "Oh my god, that's what I thought too." Yeah, but you, you didn't see what you think you saw. And then you have the what are the uh, what are those guys who they just think like I'm a nice guy, girls should like me. They're nice guys. They're just nice guys. That's what they're called. And that's that's the friend who's just like I'm a nice guy. You mm-hmm. should like me. And she's just like, what the fuck? I held a door open I for you once that. and shit like that. Yeah, it, it's common. It's, the it's commentary. Is- you don't need the dick boyfriend at all. She could have went to the dance and was walking home. Same situation. So, I read there were deleted scenes that they took out. I don't know how much they had to Jesus. reshoot or rewrite or whatnot. And there was a deleted scene where he came out of the dance, apologized to her, uh, told her he was going to get her a new phone, and uh, but then gets arrested for like public intox. Because the cops show up to get Allison. See, no, what that was going to be the show up and slice his neck and then start chasing her. It's almost That's, like the movie uh, was saying you can cheat on your girlfriend, but as soon as you start acting like a nice guy, you're ten times worse. Because the guy kisses a girl in front of his girlfriend, the other guy's like, "I like you," and he gets murdered. So uh, yeah, that guy's pretty creepy, though. He is creepy. They both should have died. Is what I'm saying. Well, one did, yeah. I feel like they put one higher than the other one in the creep factor list, and no, it doesn't work for me. But I do feel like he'll probably die in the next one or something. Um, what didn't work for me, there was a cool shot, was the floodlight scene. 
because <laughs> the lights would go out. Michael would get closer before the lights would turn on. It would turn on immediately, lights. yeah. As soon as you move, those things turn on. Um, the idea but, was cool, but it doesn't work. Yeah. They didn't do it right. That was your biggest problem with this old boy. I got no, no, no. My, the, my biggest problem is the doctor storyline. But oh. you needed a way. Oh. It's so bad. I, they could have written it better to get Michael and Lori together. Um, uh, John and I were when we watched uh, uh, Halloween two the other night. We were talking about like the whole concept. You have to have a reason to get someone a, from point A to point B, even yeah. if it's stupid. You and have to have it. There's fifteen ways to do it. Don't do something so yeah. retarded. That's uh, that's piss poor writing there. Uh, the podcasters were also useless. Um, useless. Useless. Uh, I, get, I think it's for people at the beginning. The two journalists that go to Myers and yeah. get the mask. Hold on. That's. It's also. This is also commentary of our present day where pod, there's a huge. Um, True crime podcast. Rivalry between podcasters and journalists, like class. You oh, know, that too. Uh, yeah. uh, like college educated journalists and stuff like that. Because people who they come up with these podcasts and they think they're she introduced herself as an investigative journalist well are you or did you just buy a microphone yeah she's just carrying one of these fuckers around that's yeah. it so I think it's commentary on how we perceive well I have a question Ben because you've now said commentary like ten times no it's, this is a, a slasher movie in a slasher no, movie series and it's the tenth <laughs> fucking one but so George, you like Dawn of the Dead. George Romero does political commentary. Dawn of the Dead, Dawn of the Dead was like what the second, the first and the second yeah. both had commentary. The Halloween no, is not is... known for its political or social commentary, ever, ever. H uh, two is the closest one there is, and it's batshit crazy. Carpenter always puts commentary, social commentary in his films. What's in the... The first one is something about, like... I, I read a ridiculous article about how Michael Myers is, like, the virgin, and that's why he and Jamie Lee Curtis in the first one have a connection, and, and everybody else is having sex, and... Ca Dude! Carpenter will be the first... Car Carpenter will be the first to say he didn't put that commentary in there. I think his commentary was uh, about the suburbs. Like, you move to the suburbs because you think you're going to be safe from minorities in the city who were in the city. So the white people move out to the suburbs. They think they're safe. They're not. And uh, nope. I'm not saying that... I'm not saying you need it in slasher films. I'm just saying they did it in this one. I didn't think they... You know what I would have been okay with here? Michael Myers and Laurie Strode are still siblings. He breaks out. He kills some people in new ways. There's maybe like one twist or two twists. Not the fucking Doctor character. He doesn't exist at all. And it's just yeah, H2. or it's, I'm sorry, it's H2O. But better because instead of Laurie hiding, she's waiting. That's what I thought this was going to be. It's not. At all. It's like a mother-daughter drama through 45 minutes of the movie. So, yes, the, like the daughter... Like a movie, Robin said. I see the political... Or the social commentary in this movie. I don't think they're beating you over the head with it, though. But the, the problem it's just, is it's extending the movie longer than it needs to be. Introducing characters that are unnecessary. Like the podcasters. Like, you don't need them. You don't need them. It's 40 years. No. Michael Myers escapes. And for some reason, these movies, these newer ones, really, including Friday the 13th, really find some sort of importance, like a necessity, to make finding the mask a huge deal. Who the fuck yeah. cares? Like, I'm tired well, of this shit. <laughs> yeah, we know we've got it. Slasher films are known for masks, though. Like, Friday, you think Jason Voorhees, everyone says the hockey mask. Michael Myers, everybody says the mask. William Shatner, the white mask. Like, it's a thing. I 
don't understand the reason for the podcasters. They go bother Lori. Lori gets money. She takes the money to her granddaughter, gives it to her. Uh, the end. That's it. No, no, no. The reason for the podcasters was they went to Judah's grave and you saw Michael was there. He was behind a tree in the background. So he followed them to – he knew they had the mask because they had already come to see him. So he follows them to the gas station. So, again, point A to point B, you need him to get a mask back. Why he couldn't just break into a hardware store again and grab one, Why did I don't he throw know. With that girl? Where did he get what those two? He got them from that guy whose jaw he broke. The guy who was laying on the, the counter with his teeth. It. Yeah, his jaw was all fucked up. He, Why did he take them? That and I don't know. Michael Myers ever taken anyone's teeth, ever. Now... Another thing I got a problem with this movie is you said, okay, none of the other Halloweens exist. We're just going from 78 to this. They felt the need to put these little either scenes Nods. or yeah. homages or odes to every other movie. And the teeth scene, the, how visceral it was, was Rob Zombie. And then the bathroom scene was what? Part H2O. Of H2O. So, they, I think they got in trouble there was, we need to fit this scene in. We need to fit this scene in. And it just, uh, it didn't... Do you know how they did H... They, they named the horse that that one guy shows up with, Tate, which is the name of... The fake name oh, of yeah. Laurie Strode in H2O. That was... That's what you I, need. That kind of stuff is fine. Little tiny nods. Little nods. Yeah. Not like entire scenes that are literally lifted. Like, lifted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, who... This movie was way too long, too. What's up? This movie should have tightened up to 90 minutes. It was almost it, two hours. Yeah, it was one, what, hour 45? It is the longest Halloween, besides Rob Zombies. Uh, I, I can say some nice things about this movie. There are some things that I did like. Uh, when they're at the gas station, Michael Myers is in the background the entire time. You see him pull in walk across uh somebody goes in and uses the phone and in the background you see him attacking the mechanic you don't you don't see the kill but you do see him in the background attacking a mechanic through the window um there was some others no the one shot that i really liked was uh, the continuous shot where he is walking down the street, goes in, gets a hammer, kills that woman. Oh, yeah. It goes through that house, all the way to the other house, and back till he stabs that woman in the throat. That was cool because they never cut. I liked that. See, that was... that Watching that last night, that scene last night when I was watching it, is, that's when I was like... Because people were like, uh, he just went to Hadfield just start randomly killing people. Well, that was the whole point. He wasn't looking for Lori. Yeah. He was just causing havoc he went home to his hometown um and that's when i was like oh that's why he's just randomly going into people's houses and killing people it's opportunity uh but um what did uh what do you think of the babysitter scene yeah you didn't like it my I problem with it was like one i didn't really care about the characters that i didn't know who they were Two, like, despite not knowing who they were, they're both killed off screen. So there's a lot of that little kid was yeah. funny. That yeah, kid he was, was great. Part yeah. of the movie, yep. Yeah. This movie depicts all men as weak rapists. That's a problem I have with it. Two. This movie it depicts all men as weak rapists in this movie. Most men are. I don't know. The cop was fine, no. but he dies. Why do they kill? Yeah, why do they kill Will Patton? Can't protect the family. Jamie Lee Curtis mentions it a bunch of times. Um, the boyfriend yeah. is a raper. The friend of the boyfriend is a raper. Um, the doctor is. They're not. They're not rapists. They're just. What do you call that? What? The friend. He knew Which he friend? couldn't kill her, and he was trying to touch her. That's he wasn't right. trying to, I think he was just trying to kiss her, like, lunge at her. Like, he wasn't, I don't think he was going to rape her. He never. read the situation way wrong is what happened. 
Yeah, I don't think he was like trying to rape her. No. He, he let her go. Yeah, so peering back there to watch the fight of the boyfriend and the girl. He was looking. I think he liked her. I'm not saying he didn't. He was looking for an opportunity, know. but that's not. I think he, he liked her because he was walking home alone with her. I don't think he liked her for any other reason. Yeah, but he wasn't. <laughs> he was walking home alone with her because I think he thought. This is my yeah, chance. He was friends with the boyfriend. He thought they broke up. I think he was friends with them because he was hoping and waiting for something yeah. like that to happen. I think he just. I think he was looking for an opportunity, but he wasn't gonna rape her. He's rapey. He was coming on strong, <laughs> or unwanted, I guess, but not. He's not rapey because when she said no, he stopped. Yeah, like he wasn't. That wasn't. He's just creepy. He's not rapey. Today, he's creepy. Today, had Michael Myers not murdered him, who oh, knows geez. what could have happened? He could have been in Dateline the next day. That's like saying everybody Jason Voorhees murders. He, he, it was a good thing he murdered them because you have no idea what tomorrow is going to bring for those people. They could just become rapists or something. I like, don't see. What? I don't see anybody being accused of rape because they try to kiss somebody and get rejected. No. As long as they stop when they get rejected. That's the point. But. Yes. Hey, if you guys like the rabid characters, that's fine. I thought that they I don't like any of these fucking characters. <laughs> <laughs> Allison's dad, I will say, uh, uh, Judy Greer's husband. Uh, first of all, did you recognize him? No. He's the Wiz in Seinfeld. Nobody beats the Wiz. Really? Yeah, it's Toby Hutz. He also is uh, King of the Hill. Uh, Cotton Hill. He's Cotton Hill's voice. I never really watched it. Is that the dad? I mean, the dad's dad? No. The old man? The Hank's, Hank's dad. That's what I mean, yeah. The dad dad, the old guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The old guy. Um, but the end, yeah, it, the, both parents didn't play it right, Judy Greer. Like, they can't get a hold of their daughter, and they just act like, all right, well, the cops will just uh, go find her, I guess. They're not concerned about her at all. There's a serial yeah, killer loose. That's why all the cops are there. Yeah. And you can't find your kid? Yeah. No, they played that wrong, like the oh. parents. Uh, then we have, I don't this, know what we have a 10 minute scene of her running from the woods, which I thought Michael Myers was chasing her to find out that he wasn't. He just strolled up to the house in a cop car. So I was like, why the fuck did we just watch her run through the woods for 10 minutes? That mannequin scene made me want to turn the movie off. There's yeah. no reason for that. Just none. Well, I don't think. I don't think the granddaughter had ever been to Jamie Lee Curtis's house, her grandma's house. So she was I lost. Think that was also yeah. Uh, it was kind of like, oh shit, my mom was right. My my grandma's crazy. She's got a shooting range full of mannequins. That's how I took it. But oh, no, I think it was like, look how creepy mannequins are. I literally think that's yeah, what it was. They, yeah, they were. I thought we stumbled onto the scene of maniac. Right. Um. Who was the black guy in the cowboy hat? Creighton Duke. Like you said, Cobra. No, he was like the sheriff. But didn't do was he, Yeah, was he the chief of police? He's in the movie sheriff, so damn much, and he does doesn't nothing. Doesn't do anything. No. Ugh. That was... I think he was a federal marshal, but... So is he uh, going to come back? Is that what this is? They called him sheriff. Oh, really? That's I feel fair. like... Do you think that they have this plotted out? Like the three, this isn't like a Halloween five to Halloween six situation, is it? They have this planned out. I I honestly don't know because I, I okay. Remember. When this movie ended, I was pissed off because they left the house on fire and just yeah. left. And I'm like, you need to make sure that motherfucker's dead. They can't end it like this. This is stupid. I just saw the trailer for the the next one. And as they're leaving in the back of that truck, oh, the fire, fire department's burns. coming. So I'm like, okay, yeah. they must have this all planned out then. And they're screaming, let it burn. Mm -hmm. uh, did you? I had a huge problem with the, uh, she uh, traps Michael, like, switches the gas on, lights it up, and I'm like, that's not how gas works. Like, <laughs> it doesn't light up like gasoline. Like, it would be a major explosion. That place would have 
Yeah. See, that Friday the 13th, 7, and this got them backwards. Because in yes. Friday the 13th, 7, it would have been more like that. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot how insane that explosion is in part 7. From just a little bit of gas that he dumped on, got <laughs> jumped on Jason, yeah. Let me tell you uh, what really grinds my gear. So in that kid, right. the babysitter, has her boyfriend come over. He goes out in the garage... And he sees this motorcycle, and he turns it on, and then he, like, wrecks it. He does, I mean, it, like, falls over. I'm like, So I thought, that? I thought that was going to be how he couldn't hear what was going on in the house. It isn't. Mm-hmm. He goes like inside and hears what's going on in the house. What I was like the better. point? Oh, God damn it. <laughs> you know what else I had a problem with? Hmm. The gas station. <laughs> the gas station. The gas station attendant is behind, like, plexiglass, bulletproof glass. How shady is Haddonfield? Oh, my God. It got, it got real rough the past few years. <laughs> uh, well, that one lady at the cemetery says all they're known for is, like, a murder that happened there 45 years ago. Or 40 or whatever. And again, the doctor is like, I was a study under Loomis, and I read your whole... And I know everything about this case. And again, we talked about it. There it's isn't anything. It's a two-hour night that he murdered five people and attacked her. That's it. Before Loomis showed up and shot his ass. And there's no and connection that's between that's the two of them. Actually, there is no connection. Actually, technically, they call him a serial killer. Technically, he's a spree killer. Mm-hmm. Right? He killed his sister, then he killed a bunch of people all at once. Then he killed another bunch of people all at once. But it was a... It, it wasn't like it wasn't, a serial killer. Yeah, it wasn't like one 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 or two 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 or it wasn't spread out. It was sporadic, like yeah. like well, many it years. It was, it was spree. Mm-hmm. It was like all one night. Like yep. somebody goes crazy, kills a, So technically, he's not even a serial killer. What a pussy! And the kid at the beginning had it right too. Like it was three. Was I it? guess technically five because of the guy that he killed to get the jumpsuit from in the first one. But it was three people. 40 years ago, one guy with a knife. Who gives a shit? Like, there's so yeah. much other shit going on now. Who cares? But... And how about that stupid school scene when she's looking out the window and Jamie Lee Curtis is standing out there in the fucking schoolyard? I'm they... Like, all the... Um, all the classic scenes from 78 are reversed. So, like, Jamie's the one sitting, uh, Jamie Lee, or, uh, Lori's the one at the curb watching into the school. Uh, Lori comes from the shadows and her face comes out of the, out of the darkness. Uh, I noticed that they did everything reverse. All the classic shots are reversed. Even Bonnie and Clyde, they had to do reverse, too, at the dance. Uh, that was so stupid. The Lori thing would have worked better if they were still related. Because then it kind of gives you that, oh, God, is she doing the same shit he's doing because they're connected? They're, I can't stress this enough. If you take away the sister thing, there's no connection. There's nothing. He almost killed a random girl in a town. Now there's no connection. So nothing that has to do with it, what he's talking about. When the doctor is like, I read your case file, what was in it? And also there was a survivor, one sentence. Like, what the hell? The the doctor, though, his whole goal was to make Michael talk. He couldn't he couldn't comprehend that Michael wouldn't talk. So his whole goal was to get him to his last victim that survived, and hopefully Michael would say something. Why? It's stupid. It's stupid. I, I admit that. But that, again, you got to get point A to point B. You would, the but you would, yeah, I know, but you would, it's almost like the writers don't have anybody over their shoulders going, well, wait a minute. They don't. You, there's three writers, so. Oh, God. That's, that's always a problem, <laughs> so you're getting a lot of, too many ideas, basically. Mm. I want to know who was the Lifetime movie drama guy who had to make such a thing. And even the, the restaurant scene is ridiculous. Yeah. I thought you weren't drinking. She like, shows up drunk, and starts crying immediately. Well, right? I mean, that's just saying that she's kind of an alcoholic, and this is what uh, 
This we is why get the mom... it. Her kids were taken from her, and she's had two divorces. We get to hear it eight times through the movie. <laughs> Did you think... I thought it would be better if uh, when uh, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and Will Patton... Uh, uh, like get together when the babies the babysitter house um the murders happen and jamie lee curtis shows up shoots the mirror thinking it's michael um and then she gets caught up with the the cop there will Patton's character i thought it'd be better if they were buddy copping it the rest of the movie but that's just me Yeah. That would have been cooler because he wasn't on the best character. Instead, we got Sertain or whatever the hell his name is. Sartain. It's been, when he puts that mask on, I been, I wanted to turn it off yeah. again. No. It's considered, like, blasphemy by, like, you know, made, like, big time Halloween fans. Like, it's considered black. Like, that I don't, I don't even care know, about. Just, it's just stupid movie. and doesn't make any sense and goes nowhere yeah, and I leads definitely. to nothing. Did you also notice um, Judy Greer had a Christmas sweater on? Yeah. And it was like, why? She's the kind of woman that would be celebrating Christmas in fucking October. <laughs> But Her line delivery was outrageously bad. Outrageously bad. When she starts talking about her childhood, I couldn't be more bored. No. I couldn't be more bored. She's like, I grew up shooting guns. I was afraid of the basement. Who fucking... Like, 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 she's... Mm, 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 mm. I think it's just miscasting, because Judy Greer's really good on a lot of stuff. Yeah, this isn't a movie for her. At all. No, I don't think so. I think it's just miscasting. Um, so, the uh, the bus crash scene. Did you think they purposefully tried to, uh, like kind of make you go like oh my god like when he actually kills the kid I don't know hey we got a jump scare at that scene though oh yeah the kid goes up to yeah. the cop and cop's like ah! and it makes a noise too like an actually they have the, the stupid jump noise that they like to throw in there Has, <sighs> Michael's never we've never seen in the franchise Michael killing a child though right no saw him kill a no. dog but not a kid <laughs> He chased. He tried to kill a kid for two straight movies, but he never did. Oh, yeah, he did. Um, Halloween. There was more social commentary in that scene with uh, the kid saying, "I'd rather be in dance class than hunting." I know. We're almost done. Uh, yeah, but like, that, why? Who cares? I. It's just, when they said that, I'm like, "Don't crowbar that in. Come on." Yeah, that, it's a bit much. But, uh, My problem here with the end of the movie too is Jamie Lee Curtis had her daughter Judy Greer locked in the basement. She goes shotgun around her house, and we see like seven gate to doorways fall. She never finds Michael Myers at that scene when she's looking for him. Mm -mm. They wanted to do the reverse uh, closet thing that Ben was talking about when they reverse things because she's looking into the closet and thinks he's in there, but he's not in there. So that was a waste of time. That whole ten minutes was a waste of time of her going around the house because Judy Greer and the granddaughter find him later. Yeah. Also, she's absolutely no survivalist because uh, she has the sawed-off shotgun. Uh, at the beginning, she blows Michael's fingers off uh, at the door. She gets down to the safe room, which it's not a safe room, it's a trap, but Um, she gets down there and she goes switches guns she gets a hunting rifle and goes back upstairs instead of keeping the shotgun when you're in close combat like that you want a shotgun sorry yeah. I mean if you know if you know that somebody who's spent 40 years preparing for something like this should know that yes, right I exactly. mean oh she, boy she would also have had probably two or three pistols with her Uh, tucked into her belt or in a holster. A knife in her, like, her foot or something like they always like to do in movies where she's got a yeah. knife in her boot. But she definitely would not have switched out the shotgun for a, uh, looked like a 30-30 hunting rifle or something. But, uh, um, also... <laughs> How come the dad dies with no fanfare whatsoever? 
The dad uh, just dies, he like, and it's done. He looked like he didn't... He just didn't look like he cared. Where's my husband? Come on, we gotta go downstairs. All right. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. That's what I'm saying. They shit on men. It, it's a very empowering movie for women. At the very end of it, all three of them are sitting there at the end, and which is wow. good, I guess. Even the good, like even the good guy male characters die in this, and the only one that lives is the biggest piece of shit of all, the boyfriend. Well, what the uh, who fucking planned this out, man? So, I had a problem. I had a problem with. Uh, I mean, I'm older. I'm old. You guys are older. Uh. Michael is supposed to be 61 here. They show uh, him several times, and he's just this old dude with a weird eye. Yeah, but he gets slammed by a police SUV cruiser, which are thick vehicles. Conservatively, I would say he got hit at 45 to 50 miles an hour. They gas. I turn my neck wrong, and I can't move for days. Yep. He's not human, he right? right back up. <laughs> he's 61. He needed a yeah, hip. If they're depicting him as real, a human with nothing supernatural, he's probably yeah. dead. First yeah. First and foremost. Yeah. Uh, but at the very least, they kept him unconscious for a couple of minutes. But yeah. Still. They should have paid him to Ben Tramer, Ted Hollister's death. I'm hoping Ben Tramer is what happens to the boyfriend. I hope he's walking home in his Bonnie and Clyde suit and gets hit by a fucking cop <laughs> car and blown up. Uh, also, a survivalist, uh, I was disappointed in her front door. It was glass. Uh, <laughs> she seems like she'd be the type of person that would have a steel door and not, you know, a glass door. And we um, learned in Halloween 4 that steel doors don't break. So, it's one of the lessons that we learned. But she didn't learn it. Yeah. <laughs> If you keep shooting that shotgun, that door's gonna open, man. <laughs> uh, Shit, what? It's steel. Go upstairs. <laughs> what? Another room. What's that earlier today? It was like, what the fuck does that mean? This battle <laughs> um, Another reverse, uh, Jamie, or uh, Lori, uh, Michael Myers, is uh, she gets thrown from the balcony of her house down to the. Then he can't the find house. her. Yeah. Yeah, I have a whole last, the whole last 15 minutes is reverse of 78. Everything that happened to Michael in the original happens to Lori in this one. The one I did like so, um, when the cops were murdered, although I don't know how he would find the time to do this, but he decapitated one of them and stuck a flashlight into the neck hole so that it was like a jack-o'-lantern. That was pretty cool. Did you, did you, did you also catch the uh, terrible continuity with uh, he, again, we give an homage to uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween. He smashes uh, the good doctor's face with a boot, like, makes it into oatmeal, and then we get another shot back, and the, head the, doctor's, fa the doctor's face is still intact. By the way, that squirt was terrible. When the head bust open, it was like raspberry jam-ish. They could have did That's better with it. I'm happy that they I'm happy that they actually did it with an actual head though, like a, a plaster head or whatever they yeah. made it out of. That was nice. At least it wasn't like a CGI yeah. blood so flying into the camera. Like the knife thing was. Yeah. Like barely one, of the things, one of the things pissed me off so bad about this movie, it's the very beginning. You can't have a practical you can't have a real pumpkin. You had to have a fucking inflatable CGI pumpkin. I was really mad about that. I thought it was cool what they were trying to do, but they again, you're right. They did it with a CGI pumpkin, so it, just, it looked. It didn't look the exact. I I understand they tried to get it to look like the. Um, do you think the they tried it? Do you think they tried like a time lapse? Then they tried to reverse it, and it just looked bad. So they just threw that in there. Oh, did they? Maybe. I mean. Oh God, I was I was pretty mad about that because I love. That's one thing I do like about Halloween is the different openings with like these pumpkins and uh yeah, Halloween 4 by the way best opening to a that's that is a fantastic the very beginning before they get to the hospital 
Yeah, and everything looks like fall, and everything is real. It looks cold. It looks like October. Like that's this. That was a positive about this one. I thought it actually did look like fall. Yeah. Yeah. It looked the closest to fall since part six. Part six did look like fall. You're right. Yeah, uh, and I thought this actually looked like fall. With when he uh, the uh, there's uh, red blood warm with the beginning. <laughs> with the begin in the beginning we see um uh, uh what's her name the granddaughter the daughter uh, Allison mm-hmm. she's walking to school with her friends and the kid blow- Jack White blows up a uh, jack o' lantern with like an M eighty. It actually looked like fall. I mean, it looked cold. It looked. Mm-hmm. Um, I do appreciate that. We've come a long way from painting leaves and throwing them around. Which, by the way, I want to bring up again. Robert England on the set of the original Halloween cleaning up leaves. And oh yeah. <laughs> that's that's Michael Myers' house and fourteen twenty eight Elm Street are on the same street in California today. So. Yes, I've heard that. It's like a block away. Mm-hmm. She did it. Uh, Robert England was um, roommates with uh, Mark Hamill. Hmm. No. <laughs> and supposedly he encouraged Mark Hamill to accept the role for Luke Skywalker. <laughs> I'm sure Mark but, Hamill was like, what the fuck are you talking about, Robert? Because that role <laughs> looks like shit until they actually did it. Well, I think that's what it was. He was like, right, it's a fucking sci-fi. It's really bad. And supposedly... I don't know if it's true or not. All right. Let's just give our scores. I think we've trashed this enough. Uh, Cobra, you want to go first? What? Burning down the house. Is that the last thing you want? Yes. Okay, we'll end it with that. The outro. All right. Oh, like we did the with the... Sure. I know what you mean. Go ahead. Give your score. Three. I gave it a three. Um... It's not very good. It's below a standard slasher for me. The acting's not very good. Michael Myers doesn't do anything new in this. Oh, yeah, he does. He throws teeth at somebody. Great. Thank you for that. Um, the dialogue is not that good between characters, except the little kid and the babysitter. Probably have the best exchange, and that's only like a three-minute reel of this 150-minute movie. So, uh, I just... I just didn't like it very much. There wasn't enough going on, or maybe there was too much going on. All right. Uh, I also, I actually also gave it a three, so. Um, oh. I have no idea what the hell they want this to be. What what defining Laurie Strode story they're stretching for. And I have a feeling that when this is done... And they finish with these three movies. I don't know what they want this to be. I don't understand. Like, they've tried the Laurie Strode story. Let me see. One, two, three. This is the fourth time, right? Since we're not counting three, this is the fourth time they've tried a Laurie Strode timeline. Yeah. I just... No. Fifth. What's the other one? One, one, two, H2O. Technically, she's in Resurrection. She's already died in this series once. Twice. She died twice. <laughs> Wait, three times. She died three fucking times. She died at the end of age two. She died, according to part four, in a car accident. She died in resurrection. Uh, you're even talking about uh, Rob Zombie with uh, Lori. Yeah, because Rob Zombie didn't do anything new. He just fucking had Lori Strode again. I, I've had enough of yeah. this. Like, you can't... There's... Part one, I feel like they've tried, other than part three, they've tried nine times to try and get this thing to be, because that's why they're always aping shots from the first one, and they're always trying to reverse things from the first one, or have the same atmosphere as the first one, or like you'll see on the box cover, the most frightening one since part one. It's We know. Part one is a masterpiece. It's wonderful. It's good. And the thing that makes it so good is simplicity. It's simple. It's not this convoluted garbage. I've had enough. Three. Go ahead, Ben. Uh, I'm a little more generous than uh, you and Cobra. I, I, I mean, 
I would give it a six. Uh, again, it's 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 not breaking new ground. It's not gonna go into my top. Um, I wouldn't even say in my top four. Um, yeah, top four. I wouldn't. It wouldn't break the top four, but maybe not even the top five. But uh, it's, oh man, <laughs> it can't compete with you know the nostalgia of those older ones. But I'll begin by saying. Again, John Carpenter said it best. Where do you go from the '78 one? Mm-hmm. That wasn't his point. His point wasn't to make a sequel. He didn't write it to make a sequel. So therefore, that's what happens when you, honestly, like it's capitalism. Like you know, people say, "Whoa, whoa this made us a ton of money. Everyone's doing sequels. Let's bring them back." And it's like, uh, how do we do that? I don't know. Let's bring them back though, and. Uh, you know, each story is going to, each, each movie is going to progressively get worse. Um, I do want to watch, I, did, I, I wanted to try to watch the 78 one and then immediately watch this one. I didn't get a chance. To, I did. I would like to try that. Mm-hmm. It didn't work for you. Okay. No. <laughs> uh, there were some real misses. Uh, that doctor storyline is so bad. It's so cringeworthy. Um, even his name I feel like they were trying to even say, like, Sartan? Satan? Yeah, like, same thing. And, you know, evil? And it just, um, it, 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 that was... Why would Dr. Really Loomis have an underling that's helping him with Michael Myers? Don't know. What in the hell? Didn't see him, <laughs> didn't see him in 78 or part two, part three. Well, they don't exist, five. right? I mean... Um, I understand. Yeah, they... That's out of the storyline. Um, you guys seem to have a I, I text messaging back and forth. I, I I believe I read something about like pacing and like kills and stuff like that. But you have to remember, like the seventy eight uh, movie, it kind of gets crapped on for pacing to a modern audience. And there were only four kills in the first one. Yep. Um, I there there were a lot of kills off screen in this one, which didn't really make sense. But um, actually, I will uh, say this. I'll say this. The first half hour has no kills in this at all. I really like when he gets into town and immediately just starts picking off people because that's yeah. him. That's what he does. That's perfect. Yeah. But then it gets away from it. It just goes away. The whole town, there's people everywhere. There's houses everywhere, and he kills two people in a melee. Yeah, but he's but he's, the, he's opportunistic. He's not going to start killing people in public because he doesn't want to get caught. So, Which is obvious when he runs away from the cop, yeah. And uh, the, the where it gets bogged down after that is when they reintroduce the doctor again. Um, to the point the doctor is literally wounded because the kid shot him in the bus with that stupid jump scare. Oof. And the, the cop even says, you want me to take a wounded... <laughs> Look, this guy's wounded. Why am I taking him out to help me hunt Michael? Uh, did you know that Will Patton's character is supposedly the cop that took Michael into custody? Yeah, he said that, yeah. And he uh, wants to kill him uh, this time. He doesn't want to let him get back yeah. in that. Uh, and you immediately get a, a weird feeling from the doctor when uh, Will Patton's character is driving the doctor to go get Michael. Why cast Will Patton as the cop if he's just going to die and play no part in this at all? That's like, why make it important... Why give him an important thing like he was the do- they're the cop that arrested Michael? Why do that and then kill him? Why kill him? Yeah, Knock him out! Don't stab him in the throat! Knock him out! I even have here, it didn't quite feel like a Halloween movie, even though it did actually feel like fall, though. It, it, this it, felt like it was in the Rob Zombie universe, to be honest. Yeah, I think it, I think it was a, there was a filter they were using on the, yeah. on the camera that made it feel like that. I don't know if they did that on purpose. Again, I think that was part of the issue was that they wanted to do all these homage. Uh, they got three They got three the movies to do them. We didn't even mention they brought. They had the masks from part three on the kids, the oh, shamrock yeah, masks. Yeah, we see so, uh, again, that's an homage uh, that I like. Do that kind of stuff, man. Yeah, a little stuff in the background, but not where you're fitting in scenes because, oh, we like that scene in this movie, so yeah. we need it in this one. And it does, doesn't work, but um, 
I like Jamie Lee Curtis back. I thought she was pretty badass in this. Uh, but uh, I like the sexual commentaries. <laughs> I like picking them out. I didn't think they'd beat us over the head with it, but um, apparently they did to Cobra because he seemed pretty upset. <laughs> I didn't feel like I was getting beat over the head. It just felt like you're putting a lot of emphasis in places where you shouldn't be and not putting enough emphasis in other places. Yeah. So, no, I agree. It, it's it's kind of like the uh, fitting this scene into this movie from this other Halloween movie. You're trying to fit maybe too many commentaries in. That it's what happens when you get three writers. I mean, three writers yeah. will do this. So... Uh, Sorry for the plants and zombies music, everybody. We are on iTunes, YouTube, and Spotify. 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 Yep. Throw me. Oh, very nice. Uh, 